Welcome to this video on the basics of rifles. My name is Dan Kidder and I've been a firearms instructor for 27 years and have taught federal agencies, police departments, and regular folks how to be safe and become better shooters for nearly three decades. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse and is only available for those who have recently purchased a firearm. You may have recently purchased your first firearm or your hundredth, but no matter your level of firearms experience, everyone can benefit from additional instruction. This video is the third part of a series of videos produced to help you become safer, more proficient, and more confident in using your firearm. Please make sure you watch the first video, The Basics of Gun Safety, before proceeding with this video. A link to that video is in the description below, or you can click here. By watching this video, you affirmatively agree to assume all liability for your use of this information and agree to hold Sportsman's Warehouse and me harmless for your use or misuse of this information. The information contained in this video is for instructional purposes only and the user assumes all responsibility for how it is used. A rifle is a type of firearm designed to be fired with two hands, having a relatively long rifled barrel and a buttstock intended to be placed against the shoulder. A rifle will provide greater accuracy, longer range, and higher velocity than a handgun because of its longer barrel. Because a rifle has a longer barrel than a pistol, the bullet inside the barrel is in contact with the expanding gases for a longer amount of time as it travels along the barrel. This increases the velocity or speed of the bullet as it travels toward the target. Additionally, there are cartridges specific to a rifle that have far more powder than a standard pistol round, which leads to even higher velocities. But even if all things were equal, a bullet fired from the same cartridge in a pistol and a rifle would be much faster out of a rifle because of this longer barrel. This higher velocity makes the cartridge more accurate and lets it travel farther than out of a pistol. It also causes more energy to be imparted on the target upon impact. Because of its form factor, a rifle gives the shooter more stability in how the rifle is held. The stock firmly mounts the rifle into the shoulder and the forend allows the shooter to place a second hand on the rifle to better control it and manage recoil. Additionally, the longer barrel and sight radius, the distance between the rear and front sights, improve accuracy and make it easier to aim. Lastly, the higher velocity means there is less time for bullet drop and wind to affect the bullet in flight and move it off of target. The higher velocity of a rifle also increases its range significantly. The faster a bullet travels, the farther it can go because it begins to slow down the moment it leaves the barrel and the expanding gases are no longer pushing it. This deceleration determines how far the bullet can travel. To further increase the range of a bullet, it can be elevated upward so that it arcs into the target as it slows down and begins to be pulled by gravity toward the ground. These characteristics, higher velocity, better accuracy, and longer range make a rifle an ideal tool for a variety of outdoor sports, from hunting and target shooting to defensive use for personal protection. Rifles have been a staple of the American life from the time of the pilgrims, across the plains and the wagons of the pioneers, and in the scabbards of the cowboys. They have been used to defend our nation in every conflict since we have been a nation, and they continue to protect the home, put food on the table, and bring enjoyment and entertainment today. Rifles come in a variety of styles. Some of the most common are bolt action, lever action, and semi-automatic. We'll cover these three types in this video. Additional types like a rolling block, muzzle loader, falling block, and hinge action will not be covered, but many of the principles are the same. One thing that all rifles have in common is the barrel. This barrel must be at least 16 inches long unless you pay a special tax and go through a rigorous background check. This long barrel is attached to a stock, a forend, and contains some type of action which is the moving parts that allow the rifle to be loaded, cocked, fired, and extract the fired cartridge. Let's start with the bolt action rifle. Other than the parts that we mentioned before, the bolt action rifle contains some parts that are specific to this type of rifle. The most noticeable is the bolt. While all rifles have a bolt, the bolt in a bolt action rifle is located externally on the gun and is accessed by a protruding bolt handle that is most often rotated to unlock the action and then pulled back toward the shooter. This cocks the gun, which means that the trigger is made ready to fire. Withdrawing the bolt also allows a cartridge to be inserted into the breech either from a loading magazine or manually by the shooter. Pushing the bolt forward loads the cartridge into the chamber, which is a specially cut portion at the rear of the barrel that exactly conforms to the shape and size of the cartridge. The chamber holds the cartridge in position and contains the expanding gases so that the case of the cartridge does not rupture and it holds its shape for easy extraction. 
In the middle of the bolt of a center fire rifle is a small pocket or hole that contains the firing pin. The trigger allows an internal hammer to strike the firing pin from the rear and drive it into the primer in the center of the cartridge's base. The primer ignites and causes the powder inside the case to burn at a high rate of speed, which pushes the bullet down the barrel. To fire the rifle again, the bolt must be manually rotated and pulled toward the shooter again, which recocks the gun and will eject the spent casing, and then give the shooter the ability to reload the rifle, close the bolt, and repeat the procedure. This process must be done for each shot that is fired. These parts are the same for a rimfire bolt-action rifle, except that the firing pin strikes the cartridge on the edge of the case where the primer material is located. Inside the barrel, there are grooves cut into a spiral pattern down the barrel. The bullet engages into these grooves when it's placed inside the chamber. As the powder burns, the expanding gases push the bullet into these grooves in a combination of a vortex action of the burning powder driving down the grooves and the force of the bullet rotating inside the grooves causes the bullet to spin. These grooves are called the rifling and give the rifle its name. Another type of common rifle is the lever action. This rifle holds rounds in a magazine tube under the barrel and is loaded from a loading slot in the end of the magazine tube or through a gate in the side of the receiver. Because the cartridges are stacked end to end with the bullet resting against the primer of the next round, it's important to avoid using hard pointed tip bullets that can detonate the primer of the next cartridge. Special round nosed or soft tipped ammunition is made specifically for use in lever action rifles. The way that a lever action rifle operates is a lever on the underside of the receiver is operated to open the breech and cock the rifle. When the lever is moved back into position, the breech closes and a cartridge is loaded by the movement of the action into the firing position in the chamber. Pulling the trigger allows the hammer to strike the firing pin, which ignites the cartridge. Operating the lever down and then up repeats the loading and cocking process, enabling the rifle to be fired again. When the lever is operated, the bolt slides back, pushing back the hammer, which is held in place by a spur. To decock this hammer, point the rifle in a safe direction, place your thumb on top of the hammer with your strong hand, and control it while pulling the trigger and gently easing it back down. It's important to note that if you fail to gently let the hammer down and it slips from under your thumb, the rifle could fire. To unload a lever action rifle, you can remove the cartridge in the chamber by moving the lever to the down position. On some rifles, you can unscrew the magazine tube in cap and slide the cartridges out through the opening. In others, you must work the lever up and down, ejecting each live cartridge. A very popular type of rifle is the semi-automatic rifle. This uses the energy generated by firing a cartridge to remove the spent cartridge case and load and cock the rifle to allow it to fire another shot just by pulling the trigger. To load a semi-automatic rifle, you first load the cartridges into the magazine. Insert the magazine into the magazine well. Once the magazine has been inserted, you must cock the rifle by pulling back on the charging handle and then releasing it to strip a cartridge from the magazine and insert it into the chamber. This charging action only needs to be performed with the first cartridge. Pulling the trigger allows the firing pin to strike the primer and the energy generated by the bullet moving down the barrel will cause the gun to cycle, ejecting the spent casing and loading a fresh cartridge. Each pull of the trigger will automatically perform this loading cycle. Because only a single round is fired with each pull of the trigger, this type of rifle is called a semi-automatic. There are a couple of ways that the energy of the firing cartridge can be transferred to the bolt. One is through recoil. This Ruger 1022 rifle uses the recoil of the shot firing to push the bolt back so that it can cycle. A recoil spring returns the bolt to the closed position. A slide lock under the trigger guard lets you lock the breech open so that you can inspect the chamber to ensure that the rifle is unloaded. The bolt on this modern sporting rifle uses direct gas impingement. Gases are siphoned from the barrel through the gas block and sent back to the bolt through a gas tube. This gas strikes a gas key on the bolt, pushing it backward to cycle the action. A buffer on the spring inside the tube on the stock pushes the bolt closed again. The third way that a rifle can cycle is by using a piston. The gas is siphoned from the barrel, much like in a direct impingement system, but instead of directly delivering the gas to the bolt, a rod is placed between the bolt and the gas block. This piston transfers the energy from the gas block to the bolt, which is pushed back to cycle the action. A recoil spring returns the bolt to its closed position. Each type of semi-automatic rifle will have a bolt catch that will lock the bolt to the rear so that the chamber can be easily inspected. On this AR-15 modern sporting rifle, you simply push the bottom of the bolt catch while pulling the charging handle to lock open the breech. 
If a new loaded magazine is inserted while the breech is open, pressing the top of the bolt catch will release the bolt to load the rifle. To unload a semi-automatic rifle, you first remove the magazine by activating the magazine release. Then, to remove the round from the chamber, you pull back on the charging handle, allowing the cartridge to be captured by the extractor and ejected from the firearm. Then, visually inspect the chamber to ensure that the gun is unloaded. There are five fundamentals of rifle shooting. These are aiming, hold control, breath control, trigger press, and follow through. Mastering these fundamentals will make you a better marksman and a much more effective shooter. Aiming is accomplished by using the sights attached to the top of the gun or by using an aiming device such as a telescopic scope or a non-magnified red dot optic. Different rifles have different kinds of sights, but the principle is similar. There are two basic concepts to understand. The first of these is sight alignment. An aiming device on the front of the gun is aligned with the one on the rear of the gun. It may be a notch sight like this lever action rifle or an aperture sight like this modern sporting rifle. With a notch sight, the front sight post is aligned with the rear notch so that it is even on top and also there is even or no space showing on the sides. With this aperture sight, you look through the circle on the rear sight and center the front post in the circle. The next concept is sight picture. Once you have aligned the sights, you place them onto the target where you want the shot to hit. To become accurate with standard sights, what are sometimes called iron sights, you must achieve both proper sight alignment and sight picture. To aim using an optical device will differ on whether the optic is single powered or non-magnified or if it's a magnified scope. Some non-magnified optics use a red dot projected onto a lens. To aim, you simply look through the lens and place the red dot where you'd like the shot to hit. Another type of red dot uses a tube that you look through, much like a magnified scope, and you place the aiming reticle on the target. The side-to-side -side position of the aiming point, called windage, and the vertical position, called elevation, can be adjusted to zero the rifle. Zeroing the rifle is matching the point of impact with the point of aim. For a magnified scope, you look through the tube and place the aiming reticle where you would like the shot to hit, but you must also have an approximate range to the target and either adjust where you hold the rifle by using hash marks on the reticle, or you can move the elevation turret on top to compensate for the distance. Another turret on the side allows you to adjust for wind. Some magnified scopes have a side focus knob that allows you to change the focus of the scope based upon how far away it is. These can also be used as a simple rangefinder by focusing at a known distance. When the image is in focus, you can look at the side focus and see the distance to the target. Using scopes is a complicated subject, so we won't go into too much detail in this video. Suffice it to say that it can be much simpler to aim with iron sights or a red dot than with a magnified rifle scope. While you have the ability to shoot targets at a farther range with a magnified scope, there's a larger learning curve with a rifle scope. A key aspect to proper aiming is where you place your cheek on the stock. Finding the proper placement and then memorizing where on your cheek the stock rests is called cheek weld. Another factor to be aware of when using an optic is the position of your head behind the scope. Most scopes are designed to be viewed from three to three and a half inches away. This distance is called eye relief. If you are having difficulty getting the target centered in the scope, or you see a lot of black around a tiny image of the target, you likely are too close to the scope and need to move your eye further away. This is designed to prevent the recoiling of the rifle when fired from driving the scope into your face. If you have insufficient eye relief, you can be injured by the scope striking you in the eye or face when the gun is fired. Good aiming technique is to shoot with both eyes open. One issue that makes it difficult to aim properly for some people is eye dominance. We see with both eyes, but one is more dominant than the other. If we are right-handed and left eye dominant, it means we want to aim with our left eye and hold the rifle with our right hand. To determine which is most dominant, we place our hands out in front of us with the thumbs forming an L shape like this. Then bring the hands together forming a small triangle. While looking through this triangle with both eyes open, fix your vision on a distant spot. Keeping that spot in the triangle, slowly bring your hands back until they touch the face. The hands will drift toward the dominant eye and the non-dominant eye will become covered by your hands. If you are cross-eye dominant, you can either close the dominant eye or switch the side you shoot from. If you're right-handed, you can hold the rifle with your left hand. Hold control refers to how you hold and mount the rifle. Mounting the rifle is bringing it to your shoulder for firing. The biggest issue with hold control is how you grip the rifle. 
Because rifles are designed to be fired with two hands, how you hold the rifle with each hand is a different subject. For the firing hand, the hand which pulls the trigger, the rifle should be gripped with your thumb over the top of the stock with the rest of your hand over the grip. The trigger is pulled with the index finger. The support hand should be out in front on the fore end of the rifle. It is only necessary to grip the rifle enough to prevent it from falling with the support hand. Some precision shooters who use low recoiling rifles will rest the rifle on their flattened palm. Some rifles may have a pistol style vertical grip and for those the shooting hand holds the grip just like you would a pistol. If the stock has a hole in it, you wrap your thumb through the hole and use the area forward of the hole just like a vertical grip. The top of the stock of a rifle is called a comb. Ideally, you will want to rest your cheek on the comb. Take note of where your cheek rests when you are properly able to aim the rifle by seeing a good sight picture or a clear view through the scope with the eye around 3 inches from the scope. This placement of your cheek on the comb is called cheek weld, and getting a consistent cheek weld is essential for being able to quickly and consistently aim the rifle. In some cases with a strong cheek weld you will struggle to get a good sight picture. Every person is different and the height of the scope or sights may mean you need a cheek riser on your stock. This can involve getting a special stock that has a riser built in, or it can mean adding an aftermarket riser to help you raise your head to see the sights. To mount the rifle, you insert the butt of the stock into the fleshy pocket of the shoulder. Avoid placing it on hard bone as the recoil can be painful. Tip your head and place your cheek gently but firmly against the stock of the rifle. With your shooting hand, pull the rifle into your shoulder, and with your support hand, push the rifle forward with equal force. This creates a push-pull force to help stabilize the rifle and minimize felt recoil. This dynamic tension improves accuracy, helps stabilize the rifle, minimizes fatigue, and felt recoil. With a standard rifle, you will want to avoid placing the support hand over the barrel. The heat of the firing round can heat up the barrel and it's possible to get burned. The support hand should be underneath the barrel on the forend. For a modern sporting rifle, some shooters prefer a C-grip of the front of the rifle, wrapping their hand over the heat guard that shrouds the barrel to protect the shooters from being burned. Others will hold the rifle in a traditional fashion. Some even install a vertical foregrip to hold on to. Some shooters will bring the hands closer together and use the magazine well as a vertical foregrip. None of these methods are right or wrong. Find whatever method is comfortable and works for you. The major factor to consider when holding and mounting a rifle is the ability to minimize unnecessary movement. It's impossible to hold a rifle without some movement. This movement of the rifle is called the arc of movement. The shooter should try to maintain proper sight alignment, that is the alignment of the front and rear sights with the eye, while minimizing the arc of movement. If this is done properly, the sights will stay aligned and when the rifle passes over the target during its arc of movement and the shot can be fired by pulling the trigger. Another issue with hold control is the length of pull. This is the distance between the buttstock and the grip. The buttstock needs to fit comfortably into the pocket or the fleshy part of the shoulder while still affording the shooter a proper grip on the stock and the ability to reach the trigger. Some rifles allow the length of pull to be adjusted by inserting or removing spacers on the stock. Others have adjustable stocks that allow the length of pull to be lengthened or shortened. Find a rifle that has a comfortable length of pull or the rifle may hurt you or be difficult to properly control. The act of breathing transfers movement to the rifle that can cause you to miss your shot. Breath control is simply taking in a breath and holding it until the shot is made. If you hold your breath for too long, it can cause tremors and discomfort. In that case, simply exhale, take a few deep breaths, and then repeat inhaling and holding while you make the shot. If the rifle grows heavy in your hands while you're waiting to shoot, lower the rifle to rest your arms and breathe normally for a little bit before resuming your mount and hold. Trigger control is activating the trigger with the least amount of movement. Triggers on rifles vary and some may be very hard to pull and some may be very light. Some may be very crisp and some may be mushy. Some may have slack before hitting the wall and some may have no slack. Slack is the amount of movement a trigger has before it meets the resistance of the wall. If your trigger has slack, you move it until it meets resistance and then begin to slowly increase pressure from there. When the trigger breaks to fire the shot, you should not be able to predict at what point it will fire. By simply taking up the slack and slowly increasing pressure until the shot fires, you are less inclined to move the rifle as it fires. A trigger with a single stage trigger has no slack. When the trigger is pulled, the gun fires. 
A two-stage trigger allows the shooter to stage the trigger by removing the slack in the trigger and then incrementally increasing force once it meets resistance, allowing the shot to be fired. To properly master the fundamental of trigger pull, the shooter places their index finger on the trigger with the trigger midway between the fingertip and the first crease. For a two-stage trigger, the slack is taken up until resistance is met. For a single-stage trigger, the finger is placed and made ready to fire. For both kinds of triggers, the pull should be straight back with no side pressure. Pressure is increased gently until the gun fires. If you slap the trigger or yank very hard to cause it to fire, you will move the gun which can cause you to miss the shot. Slowly and gently increase pressure until the gun fires. Follow through is keeping everything exactly the way it is at the time the shot is fired and immediately afterwards. It means getting the proper hold, side alignment, and position and not changing any of these as the shot is fired and holding them in position afterwards. Some shooters will close their eyes as they pull the trigger. Some will raise their cheek off the comb. Others pull their head back to avoid getting hit by the scope. Good follow through keeps all of the pieces in place so that nothing changes as you fire. Good follow through will allow you to maintain control and manage the other fundamentals before, during, and after the shot is fired. There are several different positions from which a rifle can be fired. The most common are bench rest, standing, seated, kneeling, and prone. Standing can further be broken into four different positions, the standard, the arm rest, the arm wrap, and the tactical. Each position should be relaxed, stable, comfortable, and properly aligned with the target. The bench rest position uses a table or bench and some sort of forward support like a bipod or a shooting bag. Sitting on a stool or in a chair, the shooter aligns themselves with the target and mounts the butt of the rifle into the pocket of the shoulder. Since the rifle is supported at the front, the support arm can curl underneath the firing hand and help provide elevation support. This is a great position for sighting in the rifle and practicing to find out various aiming points at different distances. The standing position allows you to shoot quickly while moving. The shooter can move into position, stop, and quickly gain a stable platform for shooting the rifle. The standard standing or free arm position turns the body slightly sideways with the support shoulder angled toward the target and the support elbow angling away from the body. The strong side foot is parallel to the target and the weak side foot points at the target. This is similar to a boxer stance. The rifle is mounted and the weight is placed on the balls of the feet weight forward. The support hand grips the bottom of the forend. The push-pull dynamic tension is used to further stabilize the rifle. The standing arm rest is the same as the standard standing position, but the body is turned completely sideways and the support elbow is tight against the body. The support hand is flat and the rifle rests on top of the extended hand. This is a good position for lower caliber rifles with minimal recoil. The arm wrap position has the feet in the standard standing placement, but the support arm curls under the rifle with the support hand grasping the forearm of the firing arm. For the tactical standing position, the shooter aligns the body with the target and the feet point at the target. The body bends forward at the waist. This allows a better range of movement in a defensive engagement. The support hand can grip the rifle in an overbore C grip, at the magazine well, underneath the forearm, or use a vertical forehand. For the sitting position, the shooter is seated on the ground. The knees become your support. There are two variations of the seated position. In the single knee variation, the strong side leg is curled under the butt and just support side knee is used to rest the rifle. In the two knee variation, both feet are planted on the ground and the arms rest on the knees. In both cases, the rifle is supported on the weak side by placing the fleshy part of the arm just behind the elbow on the knee. Avoid placing the bony part of the elbow on the bony part of the knee as it can become uncomfortable. The shooter should be able to get into and stand up from the seated position while keeping control of the rifle with both hands. If you cannot keep both hands on the rifle, set the gun down on the ground with the muzzle pointed in a safe direction and use your hands to assist you in sitting and standing. There are two variations of the kneeling position. In the first, the shooter kneels on the strong side knee while the support side leg is bent at a 90 degree angle. The support side arm rests the meaty portion just behind the elbow on the support side knee. The second variation is useful when the rifle is supported, say by a fallen log. Both knees touch the ground. The shooter can adjust their elevation by raising or lowering their backside up and down. This can also be used for the bench rest position if you don't have a stool.
The prone position has the shooter lying down on their stomach with their head toward the target. The rifle is pointed out in front and in alignment with the spine. The feet are spread about shoulder width apart and flat on the ground. If raising the rifle with a support, it may be difficult to get the eye in alignment with the scope if shooting on flat ground or downhill. A seated or kneeling position may be a better choice for that situation. To achieve optimum accuracy and reliability, it is important that the rifle be properly cleaned and oiled. Each type of rifle is disassembled in a different way for cleaning. Your user's manual will tell you the best way to take the rifle apart and put it back together. For a bolt-action rifle, the majority of maintenance and cleaning can be done just by removing the bolt. There will be a lever or a button that you push that will let you remove the bolt. Wipe down and oil the bolt and then clean the barrel through the breech where the bolt was removed. Run cleaning patches and brushes through the barrel from the breech end. A lever action is accessed through the chamber and also the front end of the muzzle. Cleaning patches and brushes are fed in from the front. A semi-automatic rifle has different ways of being field stripped. Field stripping is taking the gun down into the minimum number of parts necessary to clean the gun. On this AR-15 modern sporting rifle, you push the takedown pins. Small detent pins keep the larger takedown pins from being completely removed from the receiver. It is possible to just slide out the rear pin and tilt the upper receiver up to remove the bolt carrier group in the charging handle and also to access the fire control group in the lower receiver. This AKM variant modern sporting rifle has a button at the rear that holds the dust cover in place. By removing the dust cover, you can access the other parts and remove them for cleaning and oiling. This Ruger 1022 is accessed just like the lever action with cleaning rods inserted from the muzzle. Read your manual and follow all of the instructions it contains on properly cleaning your gun. Another option if you purchased a firearm service plan at the time that you purchased your rifle is to take it to your local sportsman's warehouse and allow them to clean and maintain it for you. There are a wide variety of different accessories for your rifle and you can easily customize it to make it as individually unique as you desire. Shooting sticks provide a portable shooting platform for increased stability in the field. They are lightweight and can easily be set up to give you support in terrain where you may not be able to get prone because of tall grass or brush. They usually allow you to pack them up in a compact package. Because you rest your cheek on the stock of the rifle, bulkier over-the-ear muffs may interfere with achieving a good cheek weld. Using internal hearing protection may give you a better cheek weld and while still protecting your hearing. For more on hearing protection, you can watch our video on choosing the right hearing protection for you by clicking here. Things sometimes go wrong, and it's important to wear ballistically rated eye protection. You want something that will protect your eyes if there's a malfunction in the gun, or if a round ricochets and comes back at your eyes. Good eye protection won't interfere with your ability to see the sights or scope, and will also protect your face from the scope striking your face if you get too close. Part of breaking in your rifle barrel is shooting a few rounds, cleaning it, then shooting a few more rounds, and repeating the process. You should get a cleaning kit that has a rod long enough to extend down the entire length of the barrel. You can watch our video on choosing the right cleaning kit by clicking here. For breaking in your rifle, sighting it in, zeroing your scope to various ranges, and practicing your fundamentals, having some sort of rest is critical to getting a stable shooting platform to keep the rifle still and consistent. There are a variety of rests from large heavy affairs that hold the gun locked in position to small sandbags to a bipod that attaches to the front end. If you will be sighting in your gun, you will want some kind of a rest to support the rifle. There are a multitude of different optics and sights that you can put on your rifle to make you more precise. From magnification to illuminated reticles to red dots to thermal to infrared to lights and lasers. Depending on the type of shooting that you will do, there is an optic for your application. Remember, whatever type of optic you decide to use, you must also look at how it will attach to your rifle, so you may need mounts, bases, or rings to affix the optic to your gun. Not only does a sling keep your gun on your shoulder for easy transport while hiking, it can be used as an extra support for shooting. Make the sling long enough to allow you to wrap your arm through it when you mount the rifle, and it will help you pull the gun into your shoulder for more stable shooting. Dry firing your gun, that is firing it without ammunition, is a great way to become more proficient with your trigger control. Using a snap cap with a soft insert in the primer pocket can help protect your firing pin during dry fire. They are also great for loading into a semi-automatic rifle for practicing magazine loading and identifying flinch by loading them into a magazine with live rounds when you are practicing shooting. 
For transporting your rifle in a vehicle on the way to the range or hunting camp, a case that will protect the gun and the optics is a great investment. In some states, it may be required to be locked in a case. Make sure the case is large enough to accommodate the rifle and the optics and any other accessories. They make hard-sided and soft-sided cases. They also make scabbards that cover the front of the rifle and leave the stock exposed. These are great for horseback or attaching to a pack where you want ultimate protection of the gun but may want to be able to access it quickly. It may seem a no-brainer that a gun needs ammo, but there's a lot that goes into choosing the best ammo for your rifle. A rifle is a precision shooting instrument and not all rifles shoot the same ammunition the same way. For those shooting with magnified scopes, it's important to collect your load data using the same ammunition. If you change the bullet weight or velocity, it will significantly change your point of impact. Additionally, different rifles, because of tiny differences in manufacturing imperfections of the gun and the ammunition, may shoot better with some brands and loads of ammunition than others. Shoot a variety of ammunitions until you find one that your gun really shoots well and zero your gun with that ammunition and just use that load in your rifle to achieve excellent consistency. You may even decide to load your own ammunition and that's a fun hobby that lets you get very precise loads for your gun. Watch our future video on the basics of reloading. There are a wide variety of electronic tools to help you achieve your rifle shooting goals. To determine distance, you may wish to purchase a rangefinder that uses a laser to measure the distance between you and the target so that you can adjust your optic and point of aim. To determine wind direction and speed, you can use a wind speed meter. This will measure the speed of the wind so that you can determine what adjustments you need to make. Once you've determined range and wind direction and speed, there are a variety of ballistic calculators available. You can access these as apps on your phone or you can visit your scope manufacturer and use their calculator designed specifically for their scopes. There are even tools that have built-in ballistic calculation capability built into a rangefinder or scope and they can communicate with your wind meter, rangefinder and scope to make adjustments automatically. Rifle shooting is a lot of fun. The design of a rifle makes it inherently easier to shoot than a handgun. But because you will be shooting at much greater distances, there's a lot to learn and do to make accurate shots. For long range shooting, you have to calculate wind and elevation and occasionally even the rotation of the earth. You need to learn to sight in your gun and use the information that you collect to make adjustments to your point of aim. Learning to master the rifle is a lifelong pursuit, and that in itself is a fun and exciting challenge as you will always be growing and learning new things. It never gets boring. Thank you for watching this video on the basics of rifle shooting. Please check out our other videos on gun safety, basics of semi-automatic pistol, basics of revolver, and basics of shotgun. We will have links in the description below. Shoot straight, be safe, and have fun. <music>